Hey everyone, so Nintendo a few days ago put up a tweet talking about Skyward Sword. And in this tweet, they talked at length about how Skyward Swords, well, at length for a tweet anyways, how motion controls are better on Switch than in the original release. And I wanted to take some time to touch upon this and about why you should give Skyward Sword HD a try, especially if you are a new player who has never experienced the original and has heard nothing but bad things. And no, folks, it's not Breath of the Wild. So if you're looking for it to be like Breath of the Wild, I mean, just wait for Breath of the Wild 2 or like play the next closest thing, which I guess is Age of Calamity that plays nothing like Breath of the Wild. So again, wait for Breath of the Wild 2. Before I get into that, though, I got to remind you that we have a giveaway going on for a $99 Nintendo Switch or $100 PlayStation or Xbox gift card, along with a copy of Monster Hunter Rise. That's two different winners there. And then also two $20 Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, or Xbox gift cards. So four total winners this month. Head down to the description and the pinned comment. And also, hey, let me know what you think about the camera and all that. This is my new camera, the Lumix G9. I'm currently recording this at 4K 60 FPS. Uh, you guys let me know how it works out. Uh, I have a backup recording going on as well at 1440p, just in case we have some, some issues. All right, so I wanted to talk about this because I love the Zelda series. And Skyward Sword is in my top five Zelda games. And some people find that to be blasphemous. And I'm here to tell you why you should play it. One, the motion controls are optional but also revolutionary in a way you're never going to get in a Zelda game again. Now look, I can admit the motion controls with Wii Remote Plus on the original release could left a little bit to be desired. You were constantly recalibrating, or at least you were if you didn't understand how the motion controls work. So what happens is anytime you initiate motion actions, whether it's using the sword, the slingshot, the bow, uh, the beetle, whatever item you end up using that uses motion, it the item's use is based on where your Wii remote was, or in this case, your right Joy-Con, at the time of initiating the use of it. So if you were point, you know, holding it in a normal position, pointing down, that is actually the center point on your TV. And the moment you realize that with the Wii Remote Plus, the easier and easier it becomes to not need to recalibrate because almost all of the motions in the game can be done with wrist flicks. You don't need to exaggerate the way they show in their little ditty when they're showing how improved the motion controls are. Yes, it can be fun to exaggerate. It might even lead to more immersion, but you don't actually need to do that. That's the beauty of Skyward Sword is that, yeah, the motion controls seem a bit off-putting until you realize, hey, guess what? They're not really that big of a deal. They actually work very, very well. The whole game is built around it, and it actually led to some of the most skill-based and enthralling combat yet. No, if you want this to work like Twilight Princess, you can't sit here and waggle like this and beat all the enemies. In fact, there are some enemies, especially Bokoblin, that have you know electric capabilities that will electrocute you and you will die. You need to actually have some skill. And that's one thing I want to point out to why you should play this game. If you're looking for a Zelda game that requires more skill, Skyward Sword is right up your alley. Now, obviously, the motion controls are entirely optional. I do think they added a, an enthralling aspect to the game, and they're the only time you're going to get motion controls in a Zelda game, so I think it's worth visiting if you've never experienced motion control Zelda because I think it actually works really well. But obviously, they did remap it to the stick to make it a little bit easier for people who don't want to do it or want to play in handheld. So why else should you play Skyward Sword? Well, Skyward Sword has the best story in all of Zelda now. One of the main criticisms for all of you Breath of the Wild players out there, the new Breath of the Wild players, even some of the veterans of Zelda, is that, hey, look, the story's lacking. Or because you need to go out of your way and read so much and discover the story that the story just doesn't seem as fulfilling. Well, guess what? If you are a Breath of the Wild player that felt that way and haven't played Skyward Sword, play Skyward Sword. Yes, the experience is a bit more linear, but that linearity... Well, actually, a lot more than here than Breath of the Wild. But that linearity leads to one of the deepest and most enthralling stories in all of Zelda. Skyward Sword is the story that sets up the entire franchise. In fact, if you have not played Skyward Sword and played Breath of the Wild, there are references in Breath of the Wild's story that reference back 
to Skyward Sword. That's the crazy thing. It can actually enhance your experience with Breath of the Wild by actually knowing what happens in the story of Skyward Sword. So again, the story is just really, really good. No, there's no voice acting. So that is a bit of a downfall from Breath of the Wild. But in terms of the overarching story, the way the story is told, how in-depth it is, how much there is to it, how it sets up Ganon and Zelda and Link to be in this eternal battle for all of time, it is awesome. And that is all discovered right here in Skyward Sword. So that's really, like, just from a lore perspective, the number one reason if you just came into Zelda with Breath of the Wild or you skipped Skyward Sword to now give Skyward Sword HD a chance and give Skyward Sword a chance on the whole. What else? Well, what was one of the other main complaints from Breath of the Wild? Well, it was fun to explore. It was fun to fight Lionels. It was fun to do anything you want, upgrade your equipment, all that jazz. But you know what could have been a little bit better? How about those divine beasts? How about the dungeons? Well, guess what? Skyward Sword boasts some of the best dungeons in all of Zelda. In fact, one of the best dungeons, in fact, my favorite dungeon in the series is in this game where the act of solving the dungeon itself is a puzzle. Uh, it's, I don't want to spoil too much, but it, it's a lot of fun. There are real dungeons in this game. So combine the real dungeons with the story and the gameplay and suddenly you already have a really compelling reason to give this game a try. I mean, these dungeons are way more in depth than the Divine Beast. I think any veteran Zelda player that's played Breath of the Wild and Skyward Sword and other Zelda games can easily tell you, yes, dungeons are much better. Boss fights are much better. Now, beyond all of that, we need to talk about characters. So when you look at Breath of the Wild, Yes, you have your core set of characters, but you don't really endear yourself to too many. The champions, you do endear yourself to a little bit and a little bit into their stories, but they always kind of feel like sort of a side dish, a backdrop to the overarching, you got to stop Calamity Ganon and learn what happened 100 years ago. Well, here's the thing. In this game, main characters like Groose, main characters like Girahim, and obviously Zelda herself and Impa play vital roles. Like Impa seems important, in Breath of the Wild, but doesn't do much. Impa is massively important in this game. So is Zelda. So is <coughs> Girahim. You'll learn more about him as you play. My gosh, he is one of the most original characters in Zelda history. Oh, and by the way, yeah, Fi, Fi, um, yeah. Let me just say, there is more to that Master Sword in Breath of the Wild than you realize. I'm telling you, folks, the characters in this game are endearing, and by the end of the game, if you're not saying that you want a pompadour and you're ready for Grooseland, then I honestly don't know what game you played because I'm telling you, the characters are that endearing in this game. There are so many memorable characters. Yeah, Nintendo's hyping you up with the motion controls. They're hyping you up with things like, oh, look at these things that maybe started here but technically didn't start here. But they'll say, oh, crafting started here. Mm, you could craft before. You could upgrade your equipment before. Majora's Mask, you could upgrade a sword and all that. Um, and in Ocarina of Time, you could as well. Like, hello, this stuff's been around before. Maybe not to this level and definitely not to the level of Breath of the Wild. But a lot of the stuff they say originates in Skyward Sword doesn't. It actually originates from prior Zelda games and was just enhanced in Skyward Sword. But what is really cool is if you don't like breakable items, there's no breakable items in this game except for shields. If you have a wooden shield and it lights on fire, poof, it goes away. But there are permanent shields that don't break. Uh, none of your main weapons break. Uh, there's a lot more weapon variety granted. You could argue there's more variety in Breath of the Wild because the four stasis abilities actually add a lot of gameplay opportunity that doesn't exist in Skyward Sword. But you have traditional items like the hook shot in there. Uh, you have a slingshot, which plays fundamentally different from the bow and arrow. It's just a lot of different experience of items in here. The beetle, as an example, is a really, really neat item that I think would be really nice to see back in Breath of the Wild too. And that kind of leads to my final point on why you should play Skyward Sword HD. And that is that there's a high likelihood that this game Game is going to play right into Breath of the Wild 2. I have a feeling that the reason they want Skyward Sword HD out now isn't just because it's an important game for the Zelda series, but because it's important for events that are about to occur in Breath of the Wild 2. Let's just say that trailer they have might have a whole new meaning to you by the time we get uh, done with Skyward Sword. So again, it comes out July 16th. There's going to be other games, obviously, from other platforms and on Nintendo Switch for you to play this summer. Mario Golf as an example, but I think if you really, really loved Breath of the Wild, you should give Skyward Sword HD a shot, and if you skipped it as a veteran Zelda fan, 
Now's the time. They improved the motion controls and they made them optional. So if those were the things that held you back, now's the time. Now the last thing is obviously if you enjoy dungeons, the whole game's basically one giant dungeon. When I said it's kind of linear, I mean that you go to different sections of the world and the sections of the world themselves are dungeons. So if you are a dungeon lover, uh, this is like the Zelda game for you. It is literally just one giant dungeon. All right, folks, you guys let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about the new camera uh, and all that. Let me know just in general. We have a new podcast episode recording tonight, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, uh, folks, I love you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.